We now turn to another simple sorting algorithm called bubble sort. To understand this algorithm, it's best to think of the input array A whose size is n elements as being represented as a column. The first element of A is at the top and the nth element of A is at the bottom. So instead of representing A of 1 to n horizontally, I'm representing it vertically over here. And uh, this is for reasons that you're going to see in a few minutes. But once we have sorted the input array, we are going to have the smallest element at the top. The smallest element will be found in location A uh, in, the, in the first location. So A of 1 is going to be the smallest element. And A of n is going to be the largest element. So the largest element will be at the bottom and the smallest element will be at the top. This is how the final picture will look like. Now to get to that final picture, starting from this initial picture, we are going to repeatedly bubble up the smaller elements. So think of the values of these elements as corresponding to weights. And the smaller elements, therefore, are kind of like lighter elements. The larger elements are like heavier elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to bubble up the lighter elements so that they rise up to their appropriate location. By appropriate location, I mean their final spot or their final location in the sorted array. So the way we'll do that is by looking at consecutive pairs of elements. So here's one pair, for example, A and B, which are adjacent elements in this array. Now, if A is less than B, then we don't do anything because A is lighter than B and lighter elements should appear above heavier elements. So A and B are already in a correct relative ordering. But if A is greater than B, then we want to bubble up this lighter element B by swapping it with A. So we'll swap B with A so that this heavier element A will sink to the bottom and this lighter element B will rise in its place. Right? So this is how we are going to transform this pair. And we are going to keep doing this while scanning the array from bottom to top. Okay. So first we'll we'll look at we'll look at these two elements, then we'll look at these two elements, then we'll look at these two elements, then we'll look at these two elements, and so on. So we're going to scan the array from bottom to top, examining pairs of elements and swapping them if they are not in order. That is, if the lighter element is present below the heavier element, we are going to swap the two elements. So if we run, if we do this on this initial array, what would happen? Well, first we'll compare 39 to 3. 3 is above 39. So this is the correct relative ordering. But 3 is less than 41. So when we look at the next pair, 3 and 41, we are going to swap 3 and 41 because 3 should appear above 41. So this 3 will become 41 and this 41 will become 3. Then we'll compare these two elements. 3 is again lighter than 14. So 3 will bubble up and 14 will sink down. And likewise, you can see that because 3 is the smallest element in the array, it's going to keep bubbling up all the way to the top. And finally, what we're going to have is we're going to have 3 at the very top, and then all the other elements will have sunk down by one position. 20, 35, 18, 8, 
um, 14, 41, and 39. This is how the array will look after one scan from bottom to top. Applying this, uh, applying uh, by bubbling up the smaller elements and swapping consecutive pairs of elements whenever they are out of their correct ordering. So at the end of this scan step, the smallest element in the original array is now present in location A of 1. Now what if we do this again? If we do this again, what's going to happen is that the second smallest element is going to rise all the way up to location A of 2. Okay, so this, so if we, if we compare 39 and 41, for example, 39 will rise to the top and 41 will sink. Then when we compare 39 and 14, they're already in their correct ordering, so we won't do anything. When we compare eight, 14 and 8, again they are in their correct ordering. But now when we compare 8 and 18, 8 is lighter than 18, so we'll bubble up 8. So this will become 8, and this will become 18. Again, when we compare 8 and 35, 8 will bubble up. And when we compare 8 and 20, 8 will bubble up. So you can see that after a second scan through the array, we are going to have the second the second smallest element present in A2. Note that we don't have to bubble up 8 all the way up to the top because we, we already know that the smallest element is at the very top. So we don't even need to compare 8 to 3. Then in the third scan, we will again apply the same procedure and we'll halt when we reach A of 3. The third element, after the third scan, the third element, the third smallest element is going to be bubbled up to this spot A of 3. So in general, what's going to happen is we are going to keep repeating this scan from bottom to top. And every time we do this scan, the next smallest element is going to rise up to its appropriate location in the array. So this is the code, this is the pseudo code for the ith scan, where we are going to bubble up the ith smallest element in the original array to the spot A of i. And the way it's going to look, the way the array is going to look at this stage is, elements from A of 1 this is A of 1. Let's say this is A of i minus 1. So this portion of the array is already going to be in sorted order. The smallest element is going to be A, A1 and the i minus 1 smallest element is going to be A of i minus 1. And all these i minus 1 elements are in their correct location. They are in their final location in the array A. But the elements from A of i down to A of n are not yet sorted. So they belong to the unsorted portion. And what the ith scan is going to achieve is, it's going to take the smallest element in the unsorted portion and bubble it up into this spot A of i. The way we're going to do that is, we, this is just a simple loop. We're going to have an index which we will decrement from n down to i plus 1. And we're going to compare, every time we're looking at an element, we're going to compare it with the element immediately above. It. So we start from a of n, compare it with a of n minus 1. And when we stop, when the index reaches i plus 1, because when we reach i plus 1, we'll be comparing a of i plus 1 with a of i. And once we establish the relative order, we are done. So for index varying from n down to 
i plus 1 in steps of 1, we're going to check if a of index is less than a of index minus 1. So a of in, if this is a of index, this is going to be a of index minus 1. And if a of index is lighter than a of index minus 1, we're going to swap the two elements. And we're going to keep scanning from bottom to top. So after the ix scan, we will have the ith smallest element in the original array A present in location A of i. Then when we again when then when we scan the array again, we will bubble up the i plus first element to the spot A of i. So the overall bubble sort algorithm is going to keep applying the scan step for successive values of i. So we're going to have an outer loop where i is going to vary from 1 to n minus 1. If when i is equal to 1, we will take the overall smallest element in the original array and double it up to the spot a of 1. And when i is equal to n minus 1, we're going to bubble up the n minus first smallest element to the spot a of n minus 1. What that means is, we'll be simply, in the last scan, we'll be simply comparing a of n with a of n minus 1. Because when i is equal to n minus 1, the index is going to vary from n down to n. Because i is n minus 1, so i plus 1 is going to be n. So what we're going to do in the very last scan is we are simply going to com make a single comparison between a of index, which is, you know, index is equal to n here. So a of n is going to be compared with a of n minus 1. And we're going to swap the two if a of n is less than a of n minus 1. So the first scan will make n minus 1 comparisons between these n elements, n minus 1 successive comparisons of this sort. And the last scan is going to make a single comparison between these two elements. And at the end of this loop, the entire array is going to be sorted with the smallest element at the top and the largest element at the bottom. How do we analyze the bubble sort algorithm? The analysis is going to be pretty simple as in selection sort. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how many steps we are going to execute in the total algorithm. So the, the overall algorithm has this outer for loop which is going to be exit which is going to run n minus one times and every time it runs for a particular value of i we will be scanning a particular portion of this array a from n up to index i plus one so we will be making how many comparisons well, we're going to have uh, in indexes in initialized to n, and the final value it's going to take is i plus 1. So the total number of times this loop is going to run is n minus i plus 1 plus 1 time. So that is n minus i times. So as you can see, uh, when i is equal to 1, that is in the first scan, we're going to have n minus 1 comparisons. And that's correct because there are n elements in the array and we're going to compare um, them pairwise and so we'll have n minus 1 pairwise comparisons. Likewise when i is equal to n minus 1 in the very last scan we're going to have a single comparison between the last two elements. So i is n minus 1 so n minus n minus 1 is just 1. So these are the number of comparison steps that we are going to execute. 
this is the comparison step. So in the IX scan, the number of comparison steps we're going to execute is M minus I. So the total number of comparison steps we are going to execute in the entire algorithm can be obtained by summing the number of comparison steps in each scan. And this summation is over i varying from 1 to n minus 1. Right, so the first term of this is obviously going to be uh, n minus 1 because we know that in the first scan we have n minus 1 comparisons, which you can get by substituting i is equal to 1. In the second step, we're going to have n minus 2 comparisons because we already have the smallest element at the top. And so we need to only look at the n minus 1 elements below that smallest element. And we're going to have n minus 2 comparisons uh, in that scan. Likewise, we are going to uh, have n minus 3 comparisons and so on until the very last step where, where i becomes n minus 1 and we're going to have a single comparison. So the number of times this statement is going to be executed is simply the sum of the first n minus 1 integers, which is n times n minus 1 by 2. So the total number of operations, therefore, which the algorithm is going to execute is going to be some constant multiplied by the, the number of comparisons that we are making. And of course, each comparison may or may not be accompanied with a swap operation. So in general, we'll be swapping only some of, you know, in only some of the cases where we do a comparison. And in any case, we know that uh, even if we had a separate expression for the number of swap operations, that expression is going to be less than uh, the expression for the total number of comparisons that we got here. So definitely, we can, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be less than this. So we can ignore the exact number of swap operations because the dominant term is going to be uh, the total number of comparisons we need. And that is theta of n squared, as we see here. So bubble sort therefore runs in time theta of n squared. And as you can see here, this algorithm again does not depend on the type or the nature of the input. It doesn't matter if the array was reverse sorted, partially sorted, fully sorted, random, etc. at the beginning because we're going to have we're going to be doing this bubbling up step regardless of what the type of the input is. So this theta of n square can be looked upon as both the worst case time as well as the average case time. I'm simply going to stop talking about the best case time um, here because as we discussed in the previous few videos, the best case time is generally not useful since we can always handle the special case where the array is sorted or reverse sorted and thereby achieve a best case time of theta of n. So it doesn't really have any meaning. So both the worst and the average case time uh, for, for bubble sort are theta of n squared. 